The Sagam Star and the constellation of Peleus is the most powerful uh, in the constellation. That is the reason why he's the most powerful among the cosmic energy. You call them gods, among the highest cosmic energy. And he was the only one, Mother, as Bhuvaneshwari, gave the Shakti wheel. With that, he saw everything more than what Shiva knew. So that's why he's considered, he gave secrets of the 96 tattvas and the variation, uh, how uh, the color, Kadiraisan. Kadiraisan is one of the names. He's got so many names. Kadiraisan is the multiple colors because that's the most important aspect of divine, the colors and the sound and the vibration. Spanda, spanda is the term. Spanda was first, then the nada came. Then the bindu came. So spanda, spanda is the word you should remember. What is spanda? Spanda is the first reaction. She felt, I'm all alone, I'm a pure consciousness. I want experience. If you're all alone, how can you experience you? So she wanted to create herself through us and experience that feeling through us. In the process, she has given us all a chance to ascend. And she, so when she separated into Shiva Shakti, she told Shiva Bhagavan, you go to Kailash and you take the dissolutory function. Because without the dissolution, creation cannot start again. So he, she sent him away to Kailash. And she found, she found this place. And this place is where you are going to go, whether you know it or not. But it will all be there. Because I will go there and do the function. I was supposed to do in March, April. But she won't give me the tithis. Tithis are very important. You have to do those rituals on that tithi and that moon phase, so that you'll get the benefit. So she didn't give it to me, now I know why. I would have been stuck there, like uh, Varadu got stuck for two months there. So she saved me, not giving me, she has not given me till today, the, the day, the tithi and the ritual. She has not given me because, you know, I'll go and do that and won't do it rightly. So she didn't even give it to me. She will give it to me now. I feel within a month she'll give me the date. And I probably will go once I have the do dates. See, no point going. And I go to all these yatras. Many of them are not even temples. They are wilderness. But the rishis have meditated there. So their atma energy is there. So you can feel that flame of the, their evolution. They are high being, they are divine being. The Sabda Rishis, I'm talking, there are 10,000 Rishis. 20% uh, are females, mighty Rishis. Roba Mitra, uh, so many of them, mighty Rishis. So the, the generation of that knowledge comes through them. So the Sabda Rishis came as human and uh, so that we can relate to them. Otherwise, there is no connection. Look at that vibration mother has. Trillion, trillion. There is no connection at all. We are totally different. Trillion, trillion times vibration. How could we connect? How could we comprehend? How could we feel it? It is a totally different. Even one loka, Deva loka itself is close to us. You people will end up there. Many of you will finish up this time. And next level would be Devaloka and many actionists are here already and they will connect to you. Before you pass away, they will connect to you. So when you go, if you finish up, I don't know your story, assuming many of you will finish up. As human, the journey goes on. We have, we have lots of uh, space to correct. Then we'll go to next loka and there we interact with cosmic being. We won't ha need this mind, body, and this impediment. I call it impediment, which is what separates us from them. By them, I mean the cosmic energy. And Kartikeya gives us the wisdom because she, he was given the Shakti world to see the reality. Nobody knew. He was the first one to know. He was a mighty being. 
and the Peleiades, uh, the seven uh, uh, cosmic energies which nurtured him, they were real, they are still exist. And Peleiades is a very, very powerful uh, loka, cosmic energy. There are 37 loka. Science knows about 17. Constellation, that probably the right term for lokas. Constellation. Constellations are physical. It is there. Science has identified there are 17 or 18 constellations, but there are actually 37 constellations. Our Maharishis have seen them in their meditative state. And as time goes on, science will find more lokas. But Peleides is a powerful, powerful, and from that only that energy came. So uh, for us to get the wisdom and knowledge he gave, he was given the Shakti wheel, but he had to slay the powerful Asuras. Simma, Simma, Muga, Taraka, Sura, Sura Paduman, mighty beings, do not look, think of them ordinarily. They are mighty beings. They have done so much penance, so much uh, yoga. They came almost close to Mother, or the divine beings. They were that mighty. But they had the anava, the mummalam. Mummalam means anava, maya, karma. The three, uh, I don't want to use the word dirt, but technically it is impurity probably is a better term than dirt, anava, maya, and karma. That's what traps you. That's what traps me, traps all of us. So we don't know who we are. The minute we are born, they take over. And we mechanically do our karmic things and we don't even know, and we go through the whole life. That's what Yama told Nach Nachiketa. You know the story of Nachiketa? He was a great Maharishi. Five, five years old, he reached uh, Yamaloka and asked Yama, tell me the secret of death. Nobody knew. Only a person who's died and then alive. Died and alive, oxymoron. Only that person would know. And Yama was the first mortal who died and then he was given that position as Yama Dharma Raja because he was a dharmic uh, being. So Nachiketa asked him, tell me all the secret. He said, I'll give you anything you want. Kingdom, uh, long life, eternal life, whatever you want. He said, no, I don't want anything. I want to know what happens once I die. And he stuck to that. He would not accept. He was given three gifts because he waited for three days for Yama to come. So Yama said, I'll grant you three wishes. And first two wishes, simple. His father didn't like him, that's a big story. So he said, I want my father to think kindly of him. Yama said, fine. Then he said, I want all the wisdom and knowledge what Mahasaraswati can teach. But the reality is there's much more what Mahasaraswati can teach you because that everything she can teach you it's actually not pure. It is uh, not the highest, but that's the highest humans can get. So she will grant you the 64 arts and grant. But in truth, that is not the highest. The highest is in different loka, different uh, constellation, different... Uh, that's the next loka, Deva loka. That's why that uh, guru comes here. What's his name? Uh, comes from Bombay, wonderful soul. Sampath brings him. Huh? Devya, Divya Chaitanya Guru. Wonderful soul. Divya Chaitanya Guru, I know, he connects. When I do the prayogam, he comes. So we meet. I've not seen him physically probably for four or five years. Uh, wonderful soul. And this, some of you might have met him. He's a realized soul. And he told me that uh, this place is Devaloka. I asked him, why do you say that? He said, I know it, because I see the Akshinis, Mohinis, Vidyadharas, Gandharvas, they are present only in Devaloka. And Mother has invited them to come here and get you people ready for your trip. When you are going to go there, I don't know. You don't know either, but you are not too far. Otherwise you won't be here. So you are coming closer and closer, and she gives a grace, and she gives wonderful opportunity, like the Abhishegam with today. There's a wonderful Abhishegam. Look at all the Ahutis we use. Everything you can think of was there. 
and our priests but did a wonderful, wonderful Abhishekam. Very intense, very highly vibratory, and I was enjoying it. I hope you enjoyed it. And this morning we did a homa, wonderful homa we did. And all the water was purified, and we used it to do the Abhishekam. Then we used Ahutis. Look at a beautiful plan. Who can do that planning? Only mother can do. But you are deserving. We are deserving of that. Actually, we are supposed to do to divine. In this temple, she does it for us because she has an aim, because she wrote the story and she wants to act out. She wants this place to be the most unique uh, Shakti Pita humans can reach in human body. Higher level, they, you can reach, but in, within the restriction of mind, body, intellect, and mummalam. Mummalam is a dirt, the impurity. We have it. The minute you are born, they take over. Uh, maya, karma. And that, that effect controls us, and they won't let you see the reality. And the reality is covered by these asuras, the mighty asuras. And Kartikeya is, he slayed them to show us you can slay them. Not only you can slay them, you can make them your vehicle. And he showed it. Look at that. Your mighty enemy who keeps us with ignorance never even let us know who we are, why we are here, where we came from. All this mystical thing, you won't know. You live the whole life. That's what Yama says. You humans should be thinking of me. At the end, I am the one you are coming to write your next chapter, you got to come to me. And Chitra Gupta will have to read to me what you have done. And these are all cosmic energies. They are not physical beings. But we give a name and a form so we can relate. So Chitra Gupta exists. But he's not a human. He's not mine. He's a cosmic energy. He knows everything, every act, every second, every minute what we do. He knows. I, I had many, many experiences. Small things I won't even think, I won't remember it. But they know it. And they're told. So I know we are monitored every second. Every second of time, what happens, they keep track. So mythology is correct. Chitra Gupta keeps an account of everything you do. And mythologically, he relates to Yama. And then Yama gives you the next act, which you will decide, but you'll decide in the purest form. You'll be totally honest, you'll see what you have done, what you have not done, and you'll write the next chapter. And that is prarabdha karma. That is what now we are living our prarabdha karma. That is a chapter you wrote. I wrote. My chapter I wrote, your chapter you wrote. But we did from the higher level of uh, consciousness. So it'll be pure, very objective, we are totally honest, we have not done this, we have done this. So the ano maya karma controls you and you write the chapter. And then we come back and act out. That's what mother says, don't rush. I've given you time, lots of time. Like Arjuna had 800,000, 800,000 means almost a million lifetimes. So he has given, he lived that many times because Krishna told him, Krishna Bhagavan told him. So, there is so much time. Mother says, don't rush. Ultimately, you will come back to me. So, take your time. Understand what you are doing. And most importantly, what Mother says, enjoy it. Yoga means pain, suffering, penance. She says, no. I want boga moksha for my children. Boga moksha. It seems oxymoronic. They don't go together. Pain and suffering and happiness and ex 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 exaltation. They don't go to hand in hand. But he says, here I want you to have boga moksha. Understand reality and enjoy the journey. That the journey is the most important. That journey is what you're doing, what I'm doing. Don't miss it. Don't wait for the result. Enjoy the journey. Because every second goes, it's gone forever. So she said, I want you to have boga moksha. Enjoy it. Pain or suffering, take it as enjoyment. I had given you my form, like Pratyankara Devi. She would teach you how to uh, survive, how to persevere. That's the right word. We will have a sannidhanam for her. 
and her bija is sham. Sham is a bija, and that vibration gives you ability to persevere life in any form, however painful that time is. You think of her and invoke her, she'll let you persevere. And everything is perception and perseverance. If you perceive that pain and survive, you, that is not a pain because you survived and you got a lot out of it. The, the, the reward is so much, uh, you get a lot. So if you can persevere, but some of the pain is so intense, you feel you cannot persevere that much pain. But she would let you. If you have Mother's Grace, she would come as Pratyankara Devi. There's only one Divine, that's Divine Mother. Everything else, even Thirumutis, come after she starts oscillating. Spanda, that feeling is called Spanda. And Spanda never stops. Even during Pralaya, Mother said, I always oscillate. But it's not perceptible. Everything will look like it's gone back to subatomic, uh, uh, most subtle particle. I'm not talking about atoms, protons, and quarks. Much smaller than that. Purely a consciousness. That would be the smallest. Anything else, uh, even boson. The Higgs boson is the largest one they found. But they are much bigger than actual subtle particle, which science doesn't know yet. What it would be? It would be pure consciousness. And it is particulate, but science won't know that. For the next hundred years, they won't know, because how do you measure something which is uh, consciousness. Ultimately, that would be God particle. You know the term, God particle? They think boson. Higgs boson is the smallest now. But there are much, much smaller, subtle things. They will find it. The superconducting collider, they'll build bigger ones, and they'll go speeder and clash and make smaller particles. Atom, atom crashes. <coughs> and they'll find subtler, subtler, and subtler particle. Ultimately, it'll be pure consciousness. That will take a long time for them to find, uh, in, a, in a mathematical form, what is consciousness, the particulate form. They'll find the thing, it'll take a long time. And many of you, your children, your grandchildren, when they come here, and these yakshinis may teach them, like uh, they did for Ramanujam, that, uh, what is her name? She was a yakshini. Uh, and she talked to him when he was asleep. And she gave him all the fundamental truth, which he didn't even understand. He wrote some of it and sent it to his professor. And they, they're deserve, deserving it now. He passed away, what, 1920s? Young man. Only now we have the ability to decipher, because you need that much power. Super, super computer, that much memory. Now we have those computers. We can crunch the data and come out with the facts. Now they're doing it. In Oxford, they found those manuscripts and they're still crunching. And many, many data would come. Those would be connected to interstellar travel, warm, warm hole, warm hole connection. How do you travel? Because we can't travel with the physical body. We can't even go to Mars and come back. It takes a long time. But if you have a way uh, of super uh, thing, uh, wormhole, they call them wormhole, you can bypass and go into another galaxy, another locus. They, we, we don't know. We assume they exist and we don't know. But in metaphysical way, she can grant you, and Ramanujan was granted many truths like that and now it's coming out and all the secrets about interstellar travel, the wormhole concept, all are coming out now. Thank you. Okay, that ability to do that, Kartikeya will grant. He will help us to clear the mummalam, ano maya karma, how you control that, so that you can know the reality. And you can also, uh, conquer is not the word, control the evil, evil in us, which is there. All these asuras are there. Every asura you heard of in the mythology, they all exist, but they have been conquered. They have been mitigated. The energy has been mitigated. That he has mitigated Sura Padman, Taragasuran, Simma Moha. He mitigated the energy. So that humans 
that means one trillionth of what they are. You would leave that for us as a challenge. So we need them. So asuras are needed. Without asuras, they cannot be devas. And without them, there is no evolution. It's a game between asuric and devic in us. And we are the playground. We let them... Yeah. It's a beautiful concept. Only our, I don't want to say religion, our path tells us that. This is a game between Asuras and Devas and you are the playground. You can either energize Asuras in you or Devas in you. Depending on that, you either go to Devaloka or you go to Lokpatala, lesser consciousness. But most of us, you, you'll all go up because otherwise you won't be here. Anyone who comes to this temple, they are in the path up. How close? I don't know. There's a mighty distance between human. The closest yakshnini, when I do the prayogam, sometimes they communicate. The closest, the youngest, or smallest yakshini, cosmically, is million times as much as I am. So you can see the difference. Their ener energy, the intense energy. And you will meet them. And you will go through them. And you will grow up. Ultimately, the word is grow up. To grow up, you need mother's grace. And to get that Kartikeya would be the main aspect of mother. Kartikeya is mother. Anything which exists is mother. Including Asuras. The mighty Asuras. It all came from mother. And we, we acknowledge them. We acknowledge them. And we show them our respect, our reverence. But we don't want them to be actively present. In other words, we don't want them to control us. And what? who are they? Ignorance would be the one, Asura. Envy, jealousy, horror, hatred, all are uh, uh, mighty Asuras. And to contend with that, we need help. And Kartikeya provides us with this energy. So today when we did the Abhishegam, wonderful Abhishegam. Abhishegams are very good. Homas are the best. If you want to go to different loka, reach the higher beings for evolution, homas are the best. Because we use Agni Bhagavan, we use Swaha Devi as mediator. So we appeal through Agni, so that's why it's very important. Homas are the most important to connect to higher beings. Again, because we invoke through Agni and we invoke Swaha Devi to carry our message. That's why we say Swaha each time we do it. So it's very scientific. Uh, it's mythological, but fundamentally they're very scientific and very real. To me it's real. It's science. As real as physics or chemistry. Maybe more real uh, than that. Uh, but we, we just don't know. But with the kindness and grace of Mother through Kartikeya, she would make us come today and do the Homa and do the Abhishegam, get that grace. And that only Mother can do. That is called grace. You have to have Mother's grace to be able to receive that gift. Otherwise there are so many, how come we are the only one who are here? But whatever we did today, I do it for everyone, for the world. Whatever we do, she, Mother has said, you do it for the world. Any life forms is me. Because once uh, one actually asked me, what can you do for mother? You are building temple, you are going to the temple, you do all that. But what does she really need? How would you answer this question? She asked me that. What? 